I'm John Polstra. Welcome to the September 2014 Google Hangout with the OpenShift team. I'm joined by Nam Duong, Alexa Hollis, and Nick Harvey. We'll start off with Alexa, who will tell us about the latest happenings in the application gallery and exciting upcoming events. Thanks, John. Um, so, yeah, first I just wanted to go through um, some of our upcoming events that we have going on um, in September and October. So, first of all, one of our really big events in San Francisco coming up next week, Java One. We hope to see some of you there. Um, we'll have Steve Kusi and Grant Shipley there um, giving some sessions and demos and talking about mapping, mapping applications on OpenShift. Um, then the week of October 11th in California, um, we're going to be at Silicon Valley Code Camp. Um, so again there we'll have some team members from our evangelist teams um, giving some talks on some cool things that you can do, um, cool applications that you can create on OpenShift using MongoDB. Then later in October, um, we will be present in Germany at LinuxCon and Cloud Open. Um, so our evangelist Merrick Jellen will be there talking about the future of PaaS and Docker. So if you're going to be around, don't miss that event. Um, and then lastly, at the end of October, we're going to have an event, All Things Open, here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, <laughs> a big developer conference um, where Steve Casey will be talk, giving an introduction to PaaS for developers who don't know a lot about it and want to get involved and interested. So we're going to show them OpenShift and hopefully they'll get excited about it. We'll be having some demos there and some sessions. So definitely come join us if you can. And then the next thing, um, I've shown our application gallery and a few hangouts in the past, but I just wanted to kind of give everyone a reminder. We do like to feature a new application and a new developer each week on our website. So we love to show off what users are doing on OpenShift. So if this is something that you may be interested in, definitely check out past entries and kind of see you know, the apps that we've been featuring. And we've also just recently simplified our application. So five simple questions all you need to answer to give us a little bit more information about you and your app, and we'd love to feature you on our site. So, that's it for me. That looks pretty simple. If you can't answer those questions, I'm not sure we can help you. <laughs> <laughs> so, next up we have uh, Nam Duong. Nam is a product marketing manager on the OpenShift team. Nam goes all the way back to the beginning of OpenShift and then some. I believe he was the QA manager at Makara before Makara became part of Red Hat and then part of then what eventually became part of OpenShift. So Nam is going to tell us the latest and greatest happenings in OpenShift from the product side and what users can be looking forward to. So take it away, Nam. Well, thanks a lot, John. Uh, yeah, we're remaining busy on the OpenShift team, uh, and as a product manager, uh, I I tend to stay focused on the feature requests that come in from our users, and the users have presented uh, quite a lot of great ideas. Uh, one of the many find in September is our introduction of our small dot high CPU gear. This gear is great for production ready applications because uh, it's a production gear that allows for a, a, a 512 memory footprint for your specific production workloads. Uh, specifically for uh, things like uh, PHP applications, uh, Tomcat applications, Node.js, Ruby, and Python. Now, now, I had a question on that. Why would someone want to pick the small dot high CPU gear as opposed to just the regular small gear? Because the small gear is free, but my understanding is the small dot high CPU gear you have to pay a tiny bit more for. Why? Why would someone? Why would someone make that choice? Absolutely. So uh, that's a great question, John. Um, Nick, uh, in his next. Uh, session will be demoing the performance uh, between the small and high small high CPU uh, gear. Uh, is that correct, Nick, uh, in terms of the video that you have posted? 
Yeah, I actually already have a video that goes through, um, puts the two gears side by side and puts them through their paces and you can see who's, and just, you can see just how much faster that small high CPU gear is. Yeah, and that was definitely a great video. Uh, so uh, that's one of the great reasons why we want to do that uh, is to pro provide for production type workloads. Um, the other is, you know, you get three free small gears, but you could definitely, you know, upgrade to bronze and continue using the small free gears for your scalable apps. And uh, once you see your app is uh, uh, getting a lot more requests from your users and your user base is growing, you can choose to uh, uh, migrate to that small dot high CPU gear for a better boost of performance. Now, please note that we've made no changes to that small uh, CPU gear that you get for free. And as a matter of fact, um, we've recently also moved to an Amazon node that has more CPU power. So it's great benefit all the way around for every gear that we deploy. So on the vote on feature site that you can reach uh, at help.openshift.com, many users have asked us uh, to host in various regional data centers around the world. I'm pleased to announce that just today um, we're opening up the European data center where you can host your applications on uh, targeted to your specific um, user base in Europe. Uh, this allows for uh, lower latency when they um, want to reach your application. You could use this with all the same tool sets you have today, RHC client tools and the web console. And uh, this uh, particular feature is uh, significant for your uh, production-ready applications to get closer to your target audience. To leverage this capability, you'll want to uh, deploy high, small dot high CPU, medium, or large gears in the Western European region of Amazon. Where would people want to go if people have additional ideas like this, um, or ideas and or needs for hosting their application, where would people go to submit new ideas? Um, they could definitely go on to help.openshift.com, clicking on the contact us and using the vote on features site that is linked directly on to help.openshift.com. Excellent. Okay. So any other benefits or things to keep in mind with the European hosting? It sounds to me like we're simply offering users more choices, and I, I should, guess I should qualify that and say users of the bronze or silver plan, you can now choose which region you want your application to be hosted in, but everything else about the platform remains the same. Is that accurate? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, we're, we're, we're enhancing the uh, usability for our European customers specifically uh, to host their applications in Europe. But you know, as, uh, uh, as a, an app developer in the US or anywhere around the world, if your target audience is Europe, go for it. Uh, you know, host your applications on the European data center. All right. So anything else people should be looking for coming up in the future that you can disclose to us at this time? Or do we have to just tease them and have them come back to the October Google Hangout? Oh, definitely come back to the October uh, uh, Google Hangout for sure. Thanks, Nam. Thanks for stopping by. Over to you, Nick. Yeah. Oh, thanks, John. Um, so. We had a really, what Nam pointed out earlier on the help.openshift.com, the vote on feature section, it's very useful, and I highly recommend going over there and taking a look. We always are looking for new suggestions and new things that users want in OpenShift. So what I'll do now, and I'll transition from that, is I'll go over what we released here recently. So I've put up a blog, and I'll put a link to that earlier about the September release, but we've been very busy here, um, kind of doing lots of several things, you know, lots of different things to OpenShift to make it uh, better and easier for you to use as well as faster, and, and we'll go over that here in a minute. All right, so the first thing I'm going to show you guys is the new small high CPU gear. Now, I put up a video that will show you just how fast it is, um, and just spoiler, it is seriously fast, but just an easy way for you to select the gear when you're wanting to try to test it out or use it for your application. Uh, when you go to deploy a gear through the web console, all you need to do is change the gear size here from small uh, to small high CPU, and that's it. You can also use the RHC command line to add uh, the gear size with the dash G command and give it the small to high CPU gear, and it'll do it there as well. But while I'm here, I also wanted to show you those regions that Nam was just talking about. 
So as in the same area, you can scroll down here at the bottom, and you can see that you can select your region here, and you can select a, uh, the U.S. or um, Europe, and uh, that'll just deploy your application to those regions. And it's very quick and easy. And of course, like, like we usually do with the rest of our features, um, you'll be able to do that through the command line as well. Uh, but that's not all we did. So let me go ahead and show you what else we've done. And so we've added two new areas to OpenShift recently. Uh, and the help.openshift.com is one. And I believe I've gone over that before. So I'll go ahead and show you guys the new developer uh, center, the new dev center. So we've put a lot of hard work in here to um, clean it up, right? And we got a lot of feedback from users uh, about what we should be doing with our documentation and how we should be improving it. So we took all that, we, we decided and put together a plan, and here's, uh, here's what we came up with. So as you can see, it's a lot cleaner and a lot easier to get to the things that you need. So for instance, if you want to get started, we have, um, we've now put it over here to where it's set up into nice clean sections. Uh, with very clear and concise steps. Um, we're also going to be doing, um, later on, uh, and as more documentation starts coming in, we're going to start doing more tutorials based on individual languages and frameworks. So now if you're a Ruby user and you want to find out how to get started using Ruby, uh, we'll have some of that here as well, um, and even Java, JBoss, just, just about any cartridge that we have, we're going to start creating more and more documentation tutorials on how to get started with those, specific, or with those particular frameworks and languages. Um, and like Nam said, we're always working on new features and new things uh, coming up in OpenShift. So uh, we'll be back in October for some more uh, features and new things that you guys can use. So uh, in that instance, I'll go ahead and hand it back to John. Uh, thank you guys for watching. One other question for you, Nick, while you're there in the Help Center. Nam had mentioned users could submit new requests by clicking Contact Us. I see Contact Us, but I don't see the Submit Ideas. So just walk us through that workflow. Ah, no problem. So it's very easy uh, to get around the, the Help Center. And to answer your question directly, all you got to do is click on Contact Us and hit this Vote on Features page. This will take you to the openshift.uservoice.com. Uh, and this is where you can suggest ideas, vote on the, I'm sorry, suggest ideas and vote on ideas. Um, and like I said, we take a lot of this stuff into account and we're constantly combing through this for new ideas. And there you'll see uh, the new international hosting option. Yep. Just and yeah, time. actually, this is a good, good call. Um, Time to update that. This is one of the ones that we've worked on and uh, it's, you know, it's coming to life as we, as we continue. All right. So, All right, everyone. Well, thanks for joining us. We hope to see you next month when we present some new enhancements, features, and who knows what else on the <laughs> OpenShift platform. Thanks again. Bye-bye.